Mr. Toronto Man, go away from my door. You've got my weed and canola seed. You're asking me for more. Better fly for I produce my 44. I'm just a prairie boy. Never meant none no harm. I spend my days making wages out on Martin's farm. No eastern boys are gonna twist my arm. It's so damn cold out. Hey friends, what's going on? So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play Coulter Wall's song, Saskatchewan in 1881. I have this PDF chord sheet I made. It's print friendly. It's handmade with care by me. It gives you the lyrics, the chords, the strumming patterns, the uh, walk up and walk down tab, all on one handcrafted sheet. You can save it to your device. You can print it out. You can keep it forever. So get that over at my website, playsongnotes.com. Um, and quick note is I'm going to be doing a strumming version of this song. I can't play this finger style the way that Coulter Wall does. He is a master. I am a mere mortal. But this chord sheet will work even if you want to learn finger style one day, right? Same chords are going to apply. So get it all over at my website. It's going to be a great resource for you to sort of learn this after you watch this video. Another note is I'm going to be in standard tuning, no capo. Coulter plays this capo 2 tuned down a whole step. So it kind of cancels itself out. I think he gets looser strings or a bit of jangle with his tuning and capo approach. I'm not going to mess with that, but you can play along with him and with me, obviously, if you're in standard tuning, no capo. Let's get into the lesson. Skip ahead if you know what you're looking for. I'm going to show you the basics, and at the end, I'll do a playthrough of the entire thing to show you how it works. So uh, thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate it. And with that said, y'all, let's get into this one. Coulter Wall, Saskatchewan in 1881. All right, really quick, the chord shapes we're gonna need for this song are gonna look like this. So we're gonna be in the key of C. This is pretty straightforward stuff. Basically, it's gonna be a C, an F, a G, right? But there's gonna be a few variations I wanna explain to you quickly. So you'll need a basic C chord. Now, um, you're gonna need a C7 chord as well. This is played simply by adding your pinky to the third fret of the third string while you're playing the C chord. This can be tricky if you're not used to it. So um, you want to basically get comfortable with that. Another thing about the C chord is you're going to want to basically, when you're strumming it, and I'm going to get to this in a bit, but you're going to, if you want to do alternating bass notes like this, you're basically switching from a C to a C over G. And all that means is G is going to be our bass note. So we're going to move our ring finger from the fifth string down to the sixth string on the third fret. And the key when you do this is to lean this into the fifth string, right? Like it can, can literally touch it like that. You kind of see right there. So the sixth string will make a clean note on the third fret. And if you play the fifth string, it's, it's muted because this finger is leaning into it. If you don't lean into it, it'll make that noise. The cool part about this is when you're alternating the bass note, which I'll explain in a little bit, you can sort of strum all six strings, and you're not going to get that unfretted fifth string in there, okay? So you have your C, your C7. Again, you'll sort of need that C over G, okay? And then I have a C over B here. What this means, it's a C with a B bass note. It's the second fret of the fifth string. Now this is played in context of a walk down, where you're basically gonna, gonna go from a regular C, and you're gonna walk it to a G, right? The bass note from a C to a B bass note to an A bass note to a G, G chord, okay? So when I say C over B in my tab, based in my chord chart here, that's what I mean, right? That's, a, that's the shape right there. Now, we'll also need an F, okay? You can play it six strings if you want, if that gives you a hard time, you can do just the middle four strings. Sort of ignore the thickest and thinnest. I sort of mute them with my thumb up here and with this finger down here. I and mean, again, by muting, it means that I'm sort of... I'm pushing fingers lightly into the strings, but not pressing down. And what that does is it kills, it kills the sound the string would make, right? Another way you could do the F is to basically wrap your thumb like this an extension of what I just taught you. 
This is tricky to do, so if you can't do it, don't don't feel bad. The, the trick I'll have is sort of bring your elbow in, right? But that's gonna be your F. Um, you don't need a G chord, and you'll need a G7 chord. The idea here is you want to use your ring finger on the low E string, pinky up on this third fret, and then when you go to the G7, you can put your index finger on the first string, uh, first fret. Okay. These are the chords. They might make more sense in context here if, if you're not clear about anything. Now, as far as the chord progression this song uses, it's basically one progression you're going to use in the intro and every single verse. There's no chorus to this song. It just repeats the same progression over and over again. There's one difference between the intro and the verse that I'm going to explain in a second, and it's one chord you stay on, an extra measure in, in the verse. So um, basically, if you looked at the intro, the idea is for each of these chords you see, you're going to be on it for four counts, right? So C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C, seven, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, C, walk it down to G, two, three, four, G, seven, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C, do, do, do. Then you start the whole thing over again. C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C, seven, uh, F, D, F again, F and then to C, walk it down to G, to G7 and to C, and, then, 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 and that's how it goes, you sort of repeat the whole thing. The one difference here is in the verse, you're going to stay on C for an extra measure on the second line. The second line is you're on F, right? So you got my weed and canola seed and you're asking me for more. Then C again. Then you walk it down to G, to G744. Okay? The trick here, if you want to sort of see, learn the chord progressions, is look at my chord sheet and notice that for every chord you see above the lyrics, you're going to stay on that chord for four counts. It's that simple, okay? So it's, there's that one little difference between the intro and the verse, but otherwise that's the chord progression you're going to need. Now what, what I just showed you there is you could do a single strum on each chord if you want to just play the absolute most basic version of the song, right? Mr. Toronto Man, go away from my door. You've got my weed and canola seed. You're asking me for more. Walk it down to fly for I produce my 44. Walk it up and I'm just a prairie boy. So that's the simplest thing you could do. You could play the whole song like that. You also could do it, you could strum twice on each chord and this would be like a, you're strumming on the one and the three. This would be the, the sort of second simplest version, right? So one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four. Oh, that was cool. I said four and four at the same time. Uh, okay, so that's how you would do a sim sort of a simple strum. Now, I want to show you how I like to strum it. This isn't how Coulter plays it because Coulter's finger picking, but he has this all, he's playing, you know. This is what his thumb's doing. So he's doing that alternating bass note, right? You can strum it like that. Here's basically what I have here. See this 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 chart? It's bass note down up, bass note down up, bass note down up, bass note down up. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. The idea is on the one and the three counts, you're going to alternate your bass notes. So if you're on a C, that's going to be going between the fifth string, sixth string. Now, it doesn't really matter on the other chords which notes you're alternating. On the F, for example, Coulter's doing between the sixth and the fourth. Whoops. However, I like to do the sixth and the fifth. Okay? It doesn't really matter. You can pick whichever you like. For the G, I like to do the sixth and the fourth, but you could do the sixth and the fifth. Sixth and the fourth sounds like this. Right? Sixth string down up, fourth, fourth string down up, sixth string down up, fourth string down up. 
on your down ups, you can kind of brush the thinnest couple strings, right? Don't overdo it. You don't need to do all the strings. That'll sound too heavy, right? You want the kind of bass to be the engine that's chugging along. Oops. <laughs> Let's go to F. Then to C. Then to G. Then G7 and C. Okay, those are optional, but basically that's how I like to do the basic strumming, uh, basic strumming there. Now, here's the fun part about this, which is these walk-ups and walk-downs. These are really gonna sort of complete the picture here. These are happening in the middle of each verse. You're gonna walk it down, right? And then at the end of each verse, you're gonna walk it back up. So with the walk up and walk down, what that refers to is the bass note. Right, and get ready to walk it back up. So we're walking from a C down to a G. And then when we were gonna to return to the C normally, but we're gonna do, a, we're gonna sort of walk, go from this C and we're, then we're gonna walk up back to the C from itself, right? So the highlighted notes here are gonna show you these. Simplest way to do it is just do it as I have tabbed out. Don't worry about the X's for now. Basically, you would to walk it down, you would strum the bass note, do a full strum, and then second fret, fifth string, open fifth string, third fret of the low E string. Then you strum a G, okay? I'll do that again slowly. Now with this G, I'm not playing the fifth string, I'm just muting it. That's a sort of habit I have with the G. You can do that if you want to, it makes it easier. You don't have to do it. Again. Okay. I'll explain those X's in a minute, because I'm gonna show you something cool you can do. To walk it back up, you're gonna go back to your C. And you're gonna end with a C. So you do a strum of the C, and then third fret, low E string open fifth string, second fret fifth string, third fret fifth string. Okay, I have a couple recent lessons on walk ups and walk downs. They're gonna explain what these notes are. Basically, this is a C bass note, this is a G bass note, this is an A bass note, this is a B bass note. So if this is our, our sort of home bass, we're gonna go down to the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and then the, the, the eighth or the, the one. The eight and the one are the same thing in terms of degrees of the scale, so to speak. So um, check, I'll check out this other lessons if you want to learn about what's going on here from a music theory point of view. Now, here's the sort of way to really make these walk-ups and walk-downs cool, is basically you want to sneak in little up strums on the middle couple strings here. So, <laughs> Let me explain that again. So that's a tab. Um, for, the, for each X, I'm doing an up strum, a little brushy up strum on the middle notes here. So fifth string of the C, strum. To the G, okay? Again, I'm walking down from the C to the G. C bass note, C strum. To walk it up, you do the same thing. Don't worry about what you're pushing down or you're not pushing down over here. You can leave all the strings open for all I care. It's gonna sound fine. This is the walk up. And the walk down is Go back up. 
This takes a lot of practice and a lot of sort of feel and finesse to get right. Now the last thing you could do here is incorporate this with the, the strum, right? The bass down up, bass down up, bass down up, bass down up. Go to the F for contact. Doing the verse here. One more F. C, two, three, four. C, two, three, four, Z. G7 to the C. And walk it up. So that's basically what I'm doing there for that C walk down. Now I'm going to play you a full cover here of the entire song to show you how all this sounds in context. And then I'm going to end the video. But again, get this PDF at your website. It's one page. It's handmade by me. It gives you all the lyrics. It gives you the intro, chord progression, the taps for the walk up and walk down, the strumming uh, pattern, and um, the chord diagrams. It's everything you need. And uh, it's a great song. Yeah, I love Coulter Wall. Check out his music in general. It's great stuff. And let's play this out and um, we'll see you on the other side. Thanks for watching, my friends, and I'll see you next time. Mr. Toronto Man, go away from my door. You've got my weed and canola seed. You're asking me for more. Better fly for I produce my 44. I'm just a prairie boy, never meant none no harm. Making wages out on the Martin's farm. No Eastern boys are gonna twist my arm. It's so damn cold out here. Window cut you half in two. I ain't getting now. My old plow is frozen to my mule. I've been living on. Nice cold rainbow stew. Don't be picking fights with no men of nights. Don't be raising cane while they're planting grain. They're working through the night. Gonna let you know if you ain't acting right. So, Mr. Torano Man. Go far from my door You've got my weed and canola seed You're asking me for more Better fly for I produce my 44 Better fly for I produce my 44